when do I start doing my moving? When do I call the utility companies? When do I start packing? Should I do this and should I do that? And, and whatever the case may be. Hello everyone, I'm Doug Worsley and I am a local realtor in Metro Detroit. A lot of people get overwhelmed by the things that need to be happened and they shouldn't really be that overwhelming. So let's start off with as a seller. From a selling standpoint, the biggest thing that you can do is you're getting ready to sell your home anyway, is you should be decluttering. So you should already be starting this a month or two before you even start selling your home. As a realtor, I'm gonna come in and say, declutter all these things. You got a mug that you don't use anymore and it's just sitting on a shelf, pack it, get rid of it, right? Those are the things that you're gonna to wanna to take care of immediately. Let's say we get the offer, we accept the offer, okay? There's two different things that we have to remember. One is, was there any occupancy? What I mean by occupancy is, is the day of closing is when you're gonna transfer the keys over to the buyer. However, if you needed more time because you, you know, whatever the place that you're buying is gonna be like 30 days or 60 days longer and you needed some occupancy, well then we don't need to do any of those things right away at closing because at closing, the home is gonna be owned by the new buyers but you're gonna become a so-called tenant and you don't need to plan anything until you're ready to move. So this is where things can get a little crazy. Like, should I be changing my electrical, my gas, uh, the internet service or anything like that? No, you're not gonna do any of those things until the day that you move. When you get the actual move date, that's when you're supposed to schedule those things. So from the very beginning, let's start with the list of sellers and tell you what we can do from a list standpoint. After the contract is done, this is when you're gonna start wanting to look of, okay, do I approximately know when I plan on moving? When can I get into my new place? That's what's gonna determine as far as when you can move. Based on that date, you're gonna wanna call around and find out about moving companies if you plan on using one. If you plan on doing it yourself, it's a little bit easier. But if you're gonna use a moving company, you need to start scheduling those things as soon as possible because sometimes they can get booked up. They're, they're going to come out there and give you a, an estimate of what it's going to cost for the certain distance of going from point A to point B. They have different services. They have some that will actually box it up for you or you can box it yourself. Those are all decisions that you guys need to make up in advance. Then your next thing that you're going to do is basically wait because you don't want to do anything until you make sure that it's going to close. If we got a contract today, remember there is a contingency usually of an inspection and that inspection period could be five to seven days. They can back out for any reason within those five to seven days. You don't want to sit here and schedule everything and have all these plans put in place and then all of a sudden they back out for some reason and then you can't move. Once you're sure that everything is good and all the contingencies have been removed and you know that your date is, that's when you're gonna to wanna to start boxing things up. Start getting rid of all your stuff that you don't use and put them in boxes. Speaking of that, of stuff that you don't use, the best thing is, is have a garage sale, use Marketplace, eBay. Get rid of some of those things. Why box them up if you haven't used them in five years? Why box it up and move it and not use it for another five years? Get rid of it, sell it, minimalize yourself. Outside of that, after you do all those things and put those things away, the biggest tip I can give you is to pack your one day essential. And what I mean by that is to pack your clothes, kitchen utensils, toiletries, everything that you're gonna use in one particular day, like you're going on a trip somewhere, put that in its own box to make it nice and easy. That way you don't have to go through five or 10 different boxes to try and figure out, hey, where did I do that toothpaste? Hey, where's my uh, you know pants at? Or hey, where's my pillow? Or if you put them all in one box and then you know that you're gonna use it in one day or maybe two days, it makes your life a lot simpler, okay? Outside of that, don't forget to mark your boxes, living room, family room, bedroom, master bedroom, primary bedroom, whatever, whichever way you wanna go with that, uh, basement, garage, you know, and then that way when the movers come in or if you've got your friends and you guys are moving things, you guys are going to know exactly where they go. When it comes to doing all these stuff like your uh, electrical, gas and stuff like that, the main thing you're going to want to do is, is once you've got a date, you're going to call up your electricity company, your gas company, your internet company and let them know that you're moving. Let them know the exact day that you want those things shut off or turned over to the, to the new buyer. From there, you also want to call the mail service and making sure that you forward your mail. Don't forget about Amazon. That's the one thing that everyone forgets it's about is Amazon and then next thing you know all your packages are still going to your to the new buyers. Uh, as far as the water bill, don't worry about the water bill. Your uh, realtor should be taking care of that. They're going to order a final water read. Every city is, in municipality is different. Some of them will do it the day of, some of them will do it the week before, the week after. Don't worry about it. It's not that big of a cost difference for one week of water unless you're filling up a pool. But for the most part, not that big of a deal. But 
notify your banks, your insurance companies, other relevant institutions that you know need your new address. Don't forget to update your address with your subscriptions uh, services, such as, like I said, Amazon and stuff like that. Then don't forget to start gathering up your supplies. You need boxes, markers, packaging tape, bubble wrap, anything that you can think of to, to try and help you get those uh, boxes packed and, and moved safely. Speaking of packing, making sure you pack strategically too. Don't sit there and have like one overloaded and one partially packed. Make sure that you try to utilize the, the space very well. Don't overpack them to where they're too heavy and the box falls apart. And also make sure that they're strategically packed to where things are gonna shift during the moving process and, and break. Um, I said this already, but don't forget to label those boxes. When it comes to furniture, some of your furniture needs to be uh, disassembled. Like some of those couches, they got the legs that need to come off in order to, you know, to get through the, the door. If you disassemble, disassemble those in advance, put those in the plastic baggie and right on there, legs for the couch whatever it is that you have to take apart to do that if you're moving stuff with drawers that don't come apart make sure you right take a strap or a string or something to keep those drawers or doors from opening up during that movement process you don't want to be going through a doorway and then have it come out and then you're dinging up your new walls or your old walls now we're talking about well, this is one of the biggest things okay i'm moving i got all that stuff doug i've moved a hundred times it's not a big deal what about the repairs do i need to patch the walls do i need to do this do i need to do that this is a conversation you should be having with your realtor Yes, you should be patching up most of your holes in your walls. You don't need to repaint. But when you go down and you take down a picture of some sort, you take that off of the wall, there's going to be a, a hole in the wall. You're going to want to fill that in. Here in my our contracts as well, most of the times in most of the contracts here in Michigan anyway, are going to tell you, you can take the TV, but you can't take the TV mount. That's a good thing because when you take that TV mount out, guess what you're leaving? a big gaping hole that needs to be filled and it's going to look terrible. Uh, so anyways, making sure you fix all those things. If you do have a leaky faucet, yes, you should be fixing it to, to some degree. If it, I know, well, I sold the house as is, but if it was fine originally and then it started leaking, you definitely need to fix that before you move in or before you uh, do the key exchange. If you do have the touch up paint, it is nice to touch it up and you know, don't leave the place a super big mess with holes and, and dirt everywhere. Make sure that you have everything clean. Clean that house house like it was you're moving into it for the first time. Remember, these buyers are coming in to somebody else's house that they don't know. Don't leave it a mess for them. We do a final walkthrough. If they're not satisfied, they're not going to sign the papers. They don't sign the papers, you don't get your check. So it just makes it a lot easier to do all these things up front so we're not doing things at the last minute. Make sure that you understand what you can take and what you can't take out of a house. The biggest thing that we always tell all of our clients is, is if you're to remove the roof off of the house, you turn the house upside down, you shake the house, whatever falls off is allowed to go. Whatever doesn't fall off is not allowed to go. It's attached, it stays. That means you're going to keep your draperies, you're going to keep the ring cameras. Uh, unless you specifically excluded it from the sale, it's going to be included because it's attached to the wall. One of the biggest items, old paint and hazardous waste products. Everyone says, well, I don't want to get rid of those. I just got, I'm just going to leave them to the other. No, the new buyer doesn't want those things. They're not going to probably paint the same color and the paint is probably 10 years old. It's all crusted anyway. They're not going to be using those things. Get rid of those things so the new buyer doesn't have to do so. Mow your lawn, trim your hedges, keep it nice nice and clean. Don't just think, oh, I sold the home, I don't have to do anything anymore. No, you still have to keep it in the same condition as it was when it was seen. And then lastly, the keys. Making sure you got all your keys, your garage door openers, paperwork such as instructions or anything like that. Leave those all for the new owner. That's going to be very beneficial for them. Put all the keys and garage door openers in one door. Make sure you take them out of your car. Don't leave them in there so you don't have to ship them back. Do fi one final walkthrough to ensure that nothing was left behind. The home is in good condition. That pretty much is what you need to do. I know it sounds like a lot, but if you break it down step by step, create yourself a checklist, get with your realtor, find out what you need to do first and foremost, I'm telling you, the process is very simple. So if you found any value in this, go, go ahead and leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, Hit the subscribe button. And most importantly, if you want to move anywhere in Southeast Michigan, feel free to give me a call and let me walk you through this process because I tell you what, I take care of a lot of these things for my clients and I try to make sure it's a stressless process for them. Pick up that phone, give me a call, 734-560-3499. And until next time, catch you on the next video.